In previous videos, we saw that alkyl halides could undergo either substitution or elimination reactions. In the same way, protonated alcohols can also undergo substitution or elimination reactions. In this case, when we have an alcohol undergoing elimination reaction, we call this a dehydration reaction. We call it dehydration because we're going to remove an OH from the alpha carbon and one hydrogen from a beta carbon and the OH and H combined mean that we have removed a water molecule. When we remove the hydroxyl and the hydrogen, we'll form a carbon-carbon double bond between the alpha and beta carbons. So therefore, in dehydration reactions, alcohols can be turned into alkenes. In order for a dehydration reaction to take place, we must first protonate the alcohol using a very strong acid like phosphoric acid or sulfuric acid. We also have to use heat and a weak base such as water. Secondary and tertiary alcohols will follow the E1 mechanism. Once we have the protonated alcohol, the sigma electrons between the alpha carbon and the oxygen can be donated to the oxygen so we get a water leaving group. This also forms a carbocation. Once we have the carbocation with a positive charge on the alpha carbon, a weak base like water can donate a pair of electrons to one of the hydrogens on a beta carbon and the electrons from that carbon-hydrogen bond will be donated to form a double bond between the alpha and beta carbons. The major product that we would get would be the more stable alkene. In addition, tertiary alcohols will be more reactive to elimination or dehydration than secondary alcohols. This is primarily due to the fact that tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary carbocations. For primary alcohols, it is possible for those to experience dehydration according to an E2 mechanism. However, the E2 mechanism only takes place in very small amounts because primarily primary alcohols will follow a SN2 mechanism instead.